Today's lesson is the parable of the sower. We begin with a prayer. God of grace, we rely on your love extended to us at all times and with generosity. We live day by day knowing that your care and concern is poured out for us in your provision for our needs and in ways beyond our imagining. We come to you now to acknowledge and praise you for all your goodness to us. Amen. A reading from St Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9 and 18 to 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. So great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables saying, listen, a sower went out to sow and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Thanks be to God for his word. Amen. I suppose that at the moment I am broadcasting. I am speaking and I have no idea how far my words will go. Last time Nancy and I did this, our words reached someone in the northeast whom we'd known about 35 years ago and he got in touch. When we speak, we don't know how far our words will go or what effect they will have. Are they good words? Who will really listen to them? When Jesus told the parable of the sower, he was describing the method of sowing known as broadcasting. The seed is thrown, and like sound waves, it can reach a variety of places. Depending where it lands, it may grow and thrive, or nothing may happen. Sometimes when we have the radio or television on, we don't really pay attention. At other times we listen intently and are able to remember what we have heard. If we've really enjoyed a programme, we might tell someone else about it. So a lot depends on the listener rather than the quality of the message. Let anyone with ears listen. The seed sower's broadcasting process was not an economically sound method of planting. Perhaps that's the point Jesus is making. God's seed is good and it's scattered everywhere. Sometimes with good results and sometimes it seems with little effect. The seed may be understood as his word. 
or as Jesus or as the gospel. In the light of the parable, God is inviting his disciples to cast the seed around the world in the hope and trust that it will take root in some people. It's not for us to determine where the sowing is to take place. We are not in charge. We carry out the task without worrying about the reception it may get. The farmer in the parable did not intentionally sow seed on the pathway or on the rocks or among the weeds. Seed for crops was valuable and not to be wasted. So why use this method? Instead of working on the broad and fertile farms which we often imagine, there were many poor people having, as they still do today, to eke out a living from small plots of land. And there's often only a short distance between the fertile ground and the rocky and weed infested places that hem them in or the path upon which people walk. So when people hear the word of God, will it take root and thrive? Or will it get lost among all the other things they're thinking about and having to deal with? God is generous. His love is for all creation and all people within it. He gives his grace and truth and mercy to everyone. On this understanding the parable of the parable, the responsibility is with us to sow the seed. The word grows in fertile soil. The promise of God, as the prophet Isaiah affirms, is sure. It shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. So it's a parable, and there are many ways of interpreting parables. They themselves are like seeds that grow in our minds. Another way of thinking about the parable of the sower is to ask, what happens in me? Are we receptive soil? How does the seed take root in us? Take a simple phrase of scripture like, the Lord is my shepherd. Let that phrase occupy your mind. What does it mean for you? Today, the Lord is my shepherd. God is with you and he loves you and is leading you to what is good and caring and full of light. Am I following my shepherd, the Lord who cares for me? He is Lord, so I ought to listen carefully. There are so many ways of taking that phrase and turning it round in our minds with meaning. That is what the tradition of daily Bible reading and prayer encourages within us. Time to reflect on God's presence and what it means for us. Time taken to listen to God. A thought for today, which takes us beyond our own thoughts and instincts and preferences. A thought for today which puts our life into perspective as we hear the word of scripture and make a link with Christians of all generations, but especially with God in the here and now. Let anyone with ears listen. A prayer we say on Bible Sunday. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, Help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers of intercession, there is a response. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, will you say, hear our prayer? Shall we pray? Lord, we pray for this world that you have given us, for the soil in which we plant our seeds, for the pasture on which we graze our animals, 
for the mineral resources which fuel our industries, for the seas and rivers where we fish. Lord, teach us how to treat your world with the respect it needs and deserves. Teach us to conserve the earth's riches and resources, that there may be a harvest for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we pray for the church you have given us, for the churches serving this community. Guide us as we seek to sow the seed of the gospel. Guide us as we wonder how and when to open our doors again. Bless our leadership team meeting this week and the church council in later this month. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our community, for its key workers, for our leaders in parliament, in city and local councils, and for ourselves as we make decisions day by day for the way we live. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, our shepherd, we pray for the vulnerable in our society, for children and young people whose education is disrupted, for those who are shielding themselves from coronavirus, for all who are ill at home or in hospital, for all who are caring for others, and for all who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now shall we say the Lord's Prayer together. Oh, our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let, Let us bless, bless one, one another by saying the grace. The grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. Amen.